In 2017, I said farewell to my corporate life in exchange for the cycling industry, attempting to get a bike marketplace off the ground called Bike Chaser. As a result, I went from being able to afford expensive bikes with my corporate salary, like this 2013 BMC Team Machine SLR01, to buying bikes like the aluminum or aluminium Specialized LA Sprint with 105 Mechanical, or a few years later, when I got a bit more money together, I was able to buy this demo BMC Team Machine SLR01 with Altegra Mechanical for a touch over 5,000 Australian dollars. Now, the reason why I tell you this, because it was only a few years ago where I was riding cheaper bikes and pimping them up to get them amateur race ready. And my belief system then, which I don't feel has changed so much, was this. I could get pretty close to a superbike, and for the purpose of this video today, we're gonna call this BMC Team Machine SLR012 with Shimano Durace DI2 and some DT Swiss hoops with a DT Swiss 180 hub, currently valued at 10,399 USD, a superbike. And I could get pretty close to this superbike level without having to blow the bank. So at the back end of last year, I contacted BMC, who are a partner of this channel, and I said, I have a, an idea for some content. I'd like to compare the bike that you've kindly provided to the channel to the entry level BMC, which I'll get to in a second. They kindly agreed, and as a result, I guess you could say this is sponsored content, but I feel the key takeaways from this little mini series we're gonna run will be transferable across any brand. So after BMC agreed, I contacted the local Aussie distributor, being Advanced Traders, and I said, I want your entry-level BMC Team Machine ALR2, which is the aluminum or aluminium Team Machine. They said, we don't sell many of those locally, so if you're going to do this content, it would actually be really cool if you could compare it to our most popular entry-level BMC Team Machine, which is this one right here. The Carbon Fiber BMC Team Machine SLR5 with Shimano 105 Di2, some Mavic open disc alloy wheels, currently valued at 3,599 USD. And for the purposes of this video today, we're gonna call this bike the Silver Fox. And in this video today, we will be speed test comparing the BMC Silver Fox to the BMC Superbike. But before we do that, back to my hypothesis that you don't need to blow the bank to say get a tier two bike to perform at that super bike level. In October 2018, I got the closest I've ever been to getting on a podium of an A grade or category one Criterium, and I was riding an alloy road bike with Shimano 105 Mechanical. Yes, I had purchased some MV 6.7 carbon hoops, but secondhand for roughly 1,200 Australian dollars, making the entire setup around 4,000 AUD, and that was the best crit race of my life. Another anecdote, probably a better one, a local Australian team in the National Road Series, our top level of racing here, were called Inform Racing. And guess what? In 2020, they downgraded from an S-Works Tier 1 frame to the Specialized Tarmac Tier 2 frame with SRAM Force as their running gear. Not only did they stay at the top of the National Road Series, in the years that followed, they became the number one team in Australia. Now, there are many other stories I could share along a similar lines, but I think you now get the point. So back to the BMC. The design and the geometry of this tier two BMC team machine is borderline. The exact same design and geometry of this tier one SLR01 frame set. The same frame set that AG2R were using last year in the Pro Peloton and the same team machine SLR01 frame set that Tudor Pro Cycling will use this year with two exceptions. Number one, and this is from BMC, so I'm gonna read this out. The Team Machine SLR01, the Tier 1 frames are compatible with electronic shifting only, and the SLR frames are compatible with both electronic and mechanical shifting, meaning the SLR fork is ever so slightly different for cable routing and cannot accommodate 100% internal routing. Number two, there are different types of carbon fibers used within each frame set and therefore a different carbon layup is used between the SLR01 and the SLR. The main goal, however, from BMC is to achieve the exact same stiffness targets for both frames to ensure a similar like riding experience. As a result of that last one, 
therein lies a bit of a weight penalty. The SLRO1, with their lightest finished, frame weight is 820 grams, fork weight is 345 grams, and seat post weight is 185 grams. For the tier two SLR, you can add about 150 grams of weight onto the frame, 50 grams of weight onto the fork, nothing for the seat post it seems, so total 200 grams more. So external to a bit of weight, 200 grams. All those years of feedback from pros, engineering and design that goes into the BMC Team Machine race bike, it's all here. And with Shimano 105 Di2, which from all accounts, I've used this bike for about a thousand kilometers now, it's a really solid group set. The foundation is set for us to take a much cheaper mainstream option and pimp her up with a defined budget, which I'd love your input on, and see how close can we get this bike to this bike in terms of speed and performance. Now, first things first, I've currently tested these bikes against each other in their current state to see what gaps we need to close. So let's talk about that, including the current weight of each of these bikes, before we discuss about how we might go about pimping up the Silver Fox. BMC Superbike. The Silver Fox. Old school BMC rim brake. Holy shit. So the power base speed tests we typically do on this channel have been turned on their heads for some very weird and unexpected reason, which we'll get to. As per normal, we are using the Asioma power pedals for these speed tests who are a partner of this channel and over at the RCA, which you can see on my white bibs there, <laughs> which means I'm able to very easily use the same power meter on both bikes, which is as simple as shown here. Although personally, I like to recalibrate the pedals after changing each bike using the Asioma app, which literally takes a few seconds. This is just to ensure we're getting the highly regarded real-time angular velocity accuracy the Asiomas have become well known for. I'll link to the Asiomas below for anyone that might like to check them out. So I completed two runs on the BMC Superbike. Up the closed road segment, which is a one and a half kilometer climb at 3.6% gradient at 350 watts and three runs on the Silver Fox. I just did one extra one for good measure. I also completed two runs each on the 1.6 kilometer descent where I pedal at 350 watts into a signpost and then I freewheel all the way down. Now, when I finish these tests, I always go to the local coffee shop and quickly look at the results just to see what's transferred Inspired. I'm excited and this is the first time I've ever been completely flabbergasted. Now, I know you can pick holes in these tests, but if there's one thing that's proven to be true over the last few years of running these tests, particularly up the closed road climb, is consistency. Each bike with a particular setup is normally within a second or two. But have a look at this. On the closed road climb, on a much cheaper and heavier BMC, even with the average Vittoria Rubino tires, at the same wattage, in the same position, with the wind blowing pretty much similar, I have the same speed. I was not expecting that. I was very confused. Thankfully on the descent, the Superbike is almost 10 seconds faster, which I would say has a lot to do with the wheels. So as mentioned, I'm shocked at the local coffee shop and I'm thinking to myself, I need to do another test run. So I get back on the bike and this time I try another climb, this time steeper, which runs parallel with the closed road climb. So I tackle this one kilometer climb at an 8.2% average gradient at 300 watts, giving us thankfully some meat on the bone, being close to a 10 second time gap. Now I know some of you will be saying one run is not good enough, we need at least two. And I agree, but keep in mind, this was completely unexpected. I had cafe legs and I was wearing an all white kit and it was literally, I promise, about to piss down with rain. The other test I wanted to do for this particular project, which we've never done before on the channel, is a spin down, which is really relevant for this project because I feel the Silver Fox, with these heavy wheels and tires, rolling resistance, it loses its speed really quickly. So I'm at the local crit track here. This is a little descent. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw the leg over. I'm not even gonna pedal. I'm just gonna roll down this hill, hold the same line and see how far I get, I'm gonna do it twice. This is called the thong protocol. I picked this up off another Aussie YouTuber called Burgess and his bike. I'll drop a thong on the first attempt and on the second attempt. And then we'll compare this bike in terms of how far it gets to the super bike. Turns out that first descent generated too much speed. So we're on the other side of the crit track. We'll try this descent 
I'm in line here with a pole. I am filming something, but you do your thing. It's all good. That's pretty close. It's about a bike length apart from each other. All right, super bike time. I need another pair of thongs or some socks. So we have a few gaps to close now, which I'll summarize by putting up on the screen. But before I do so, if you've gotten value from this content, please don't forget to give the video a like. It helps the channel out, greatly appreciated. And what I wanna do here is see how close we can get to closing these gaps without spending too much on the Silver Fox. Now, the things that I wanna upgrade, which I'd love your input on, clearly the wheels, the tires, the tubes, maybe the bars, maybe a rear cassette, it's all gonna be based on your feedback and I'm also gonna put a post up on the YouTube community section where you can vote on how much we invest in the Silver Fox. Is it 1,000 USD, is it 1,500 USD, 2,000, and I'll probably put up 2,500 as well. And based off your feedback and your vote, we'll upgrade the Silver Fox and let's see what's gonna happen.